My dear friends, I'd like to wish you a blessed Christmas. It's a great blessing for me to be here with you tonight. We'd like to welcome any visitors we have here at Immaculate Conception. We welcome you. We ask that you make this your home parish. We ask that only those who attend the traditional Mass receive Holy Communion here. In order to receive, one must attend exclusively the traditional Latin Mass. We do not do communion in the hand. We fast for three hours from solids and alcoholic beverages, and one must be in the state of sanctifying grace. I ask you to please pray for Charles Kunkel's young baby daughter who's in the hospital. The funeral for Miss Rosanna Fiore will probably be Thursday around 10 in the morning. Uh, please call to verify either Ms. Fiore or myself. I don't know if the church office will be occupied this week. My intention for the Mass this evening, uh, my dear friends, is the Christmas Novena Masses, which are on the altar. <coughs> Any intentions which were meant to be there are remembered in the Mass tonight. She brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him up in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. <coughs> My dear friends, the feast of the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, came 5,199 years after the creation of the world. It came 2,957 years after the deluge. It came 2,015 years after the birth of Abraham. It came 1,510 years from Moses and the exodus of the children of Israel out of Egypt. 1,032 years after Israel had received their second king, David. 752 years after the building of the city of Rome. And 42 years into the reign of the Emperor Augustus, where there was peace throughout the whole world. I would like for you to consider tonight the time of our Lord's birth. I'd like for you to consider the place of our Lord's birth. The patriarch Jacob mentions the time of the coming of the Redeemer when he said, the scepter shall not pass or be taken away from Judah, nor a ruler from his thigh, till he comes that is to be sent, and he shall be the expectation of the nations. <coughs> Herod was the king of the Jews, but he was king in title only. He was not a descendant of Judah. He was an Indumean. The Jews themselves loathed Herod and acknowledged that they had no king, for they said to Pilate, we have no king but Caesar. Within the time of the enrollment of the whole world, we know from scriptures that Augustus had sent out a decree that the whole world the, the Romans at that time were the masters of nearly the whole world, the whole known world, should be enrolled. This enrollment, my dear friends, comprised of two things. They wanted to know the number of the inhabitants, and they wanted to know the worldly possessions of each so that they could be taxed. According to the prophecy of Micaeus, the Savior was to be born in Bethlehem. <clears throat> the Roman emperor, without being aware, cooperated with these designs of God so that the prediction of Micaeus might be fulfilled. Mary and Joseph went to Bethlehem because they were of the lineage of the family of David. And Bethlehem was the ancestral home of David, their second king. 
God often guides his plans with or without the designs of men. The enrollment of the whole world, the birth happened when the world was in transit to symbolize that our Lord came for both the Jew and the Gentile. Some were of the opinion that the Messiah was only for the Jews. St. Paul was of that opinion until he had the vision on the tanner's roof where the sheep descended with all sorts of animals and he heard the voice of God who commanded him to eat. And he said, far be it for me to eat anything unclean. And God reprimanded Paul and says, do not call that unclean which I have made. Here our Lord was showing that he did not came only for the Jews, but also for the Gentiles. Christ came to manifest himself at his very entrance into the world as the Prince of Peace, foretold by the prophets. The angels also on the plains of Bethlehem that night announced him as the Prince of Peace when they sang to the shepherds, glory in the highest, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men of goodwill. Peace between God and man in that he, the Christ child, would satisfy for the death and restore grace to mankind. Peace within ourselves in that our souls had been forgiven and mankind restored to life. Peace between us and our neighbors as the Christ child <clears throat> would establish a religion that would be a bond of unity and he would give a command that we love one another. Our Lord was born at nighttime, very much like this one. While all, all things were quiet, in quiet silence, and the night was in the midst of its, her course, the Almighty God leapt down from heaven to his, from his royal throne and touched the earth as never before. <clears throat> Even amongst the Jews, many errors prevailed. Their worship was, for the most part, only exterior ceremonies. Their worship was a shell without a kernel. And therefore, God says to them, the people draw near me with their mouths, and with their lips they glorify me but their hearts are far from me. Our blessed Lord chose Bethlehem for his birthplace. He chose a stable for his dwelling. He chose a crib for his bed. He chose Bethlehem to fulfill the prophecy of Micaeus. The Jews very distinctly recognized Bethlehem as the place where the Messiah would be born. He ch he ch secondly, <coughs> he chose Bethlehem to humble himself at the entrance into the world. Bethlehem was small. Bethlehem was insignificant. Village, scarcely numbering a thousand inhabitants, without renown in the eyes of the world. It was pride which plunged men into the deepest misery. Christ wished to give us the example of poverty, to counteract the material goods of the world, which caused so many to lose their souls. He chose Bethlehem to be for us what Bethlehem signifies. <coughs> it means house of bread. Our Lord Jesus Christ, as he told the Samaritan woman, is the true bread of life. And just as earthly bread nourishes the body, strengthens and preserves life, so our Lord Jesus Christ nourishes and strengthens the soul through the Holy Ghost, the author of life by grace. He says, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall not hunger. If anyone eat of this bread, he shall live forever. 
And the bread which I will give you is my flesh for the life of the world. Imagine how the shepherds greeted that Christ child in awe and in eagerness. We Catholics have Christ just as real here. And our every entrance into this church should be filled with awe and eagerness as the Jews. He was born in a stable, ostensibly why the stable? Because as scripture says, there was no room for him in the inn. Why was there no room in the inn? Because the fathers tell us because of their poverty. It was recognizable at once. The innkeeper could see their coarse garments, could see Joseph's weathered skin, they were poor. They had rough apparel. The innkeeper was worried about being materially compensated for lodging. He felt, felt there would be others with more influence, more finances than, than Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. <coughs> he, he saw that Mary was full term. He saw her condition. Her condition would dissuade any innkeeper. They would not want the inconvenience of having an expectant mother deliver a child in their room. They didn't have medicine as we have today. How many things could go wrong? How long would they be there? All this went through the mind of the innkeeper. Today, too many have no room for the Christ child because of the inconvenience that he causes them. They would have to change their whole lives, their routines, their habits, their recreations. His bed was that of a crib. We have the ox and the ass in the crib over there. The ox knoweth his owner and the donkey his master's crib, we read in the scriptures. St. Gregory explains this. He understands the ox to stand for the Jewish nation. The ox was a beast of burden. The Jews had been carrying the Roman burden for so many years, the Roman law. The donkey represents the Gentiles, stubborn, steeped in folly and idolatry, not the animal, but the Gentiles. Christ was to be the redemption of both the Jews and the Gentiles. Christ came for us foolish Gentiles also. No matter how sinful we may have been, Christ still came to redeem us. He has come as a child that we fear him not. He bids us to come to himself. If we have been away from the holy sacrifice for time, he bids us to come back. He bids us as a child to approach first perhaps the confessional and then his communion realm. I pray that each of you may have lodging for the Christ child in your heart. I pray that you have Christ in your soul by grace and that you never leave the Christ child. Your embrace remain perpetual and from now on eternal. May Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.